For the women in the audience tonight, imagine. Imagine that the world's changed. Tomorrow morning you wake up, you look in the mirror, and you are perfectly content with everything you see. You are perfectly pleased with everything about your body. You don't feel any part of you needs to be fixed, changed, or hidden. Imagine the impact that would have on your self-confidence. Imagine how that would change how you would expect people to react to you. Imagine day to day, moment to moment, how that would affect your feelings and thoughts about how you value yourself. In that changed world, you would be changed forever because body image and self-esteem are tightly intertwined. And if you feel good about how you look, it's going to show up in your self-esteem. For the men here tonight, imagine what your lives would be like in a changed world like this. Imagine if your daughters, your girlfriends, your wives, were perfectly pleased with how they looked. What would that mean to you in your life? Well, first of all, you would never have to worry that it would be your daughter, your girlfriend, or your wife who became anorexic or bulimic. You wouldn't have to watch money, time, and effort being wasted on diet pills, diet plans, diet clubs. If you have a daughter, you could be totally confident that when she was a teenager, that she would steer clear from any man who would only value her for her looks. Bottom line is, if you live with someone who feels good about how they look, it's much more pleasant than living with someone who is in constant battle with their bodies. Now, all of you parents out there, grandparents and future parents-to-be, imagine if there was a way we could create a tool to help bring this type of world, make this type of world a reality for today's girls and tomorrow's women. It's that kind of vision that motivated me to found high self-esteem toys, even though I had no previous experience in toys, and to create the Happy To Be Me doll. Oops. For most of the women here today, including myself, my guess is, is that tomorrow morning when you wake up and you look in the mirror, you will not be able to enjoy that contented feeling of liking everything you see in the mirror. So you have to ask yourself, what went wrong for us? Why do women's opinions of their bodies just seem to self-destruct with time? What's going on? Statistics will tell you that today, right now in this country, 2% of all the girls will grow up to be anorexic. 15% of all girls will grow up to be bulimic. And 70% of all girls will grow up to believe they are fat. But you know what? I don't think we need statistics to tell us that most adult women do not feel good about how they look. All you have to do is do a grassroots survey of your friends. Ask them, are they content with the way they look or do they feel some part of their body needs to be fixed, changed, or hidden? It's that kind of process, that grassroots process, that brought me to developing the Happy To Be Me doll. About three years ago, I was talking to some of my friends who are largely in computer systems also, and we were absolutely marveling how all of the adult Women friends we had, regardless of what they've accomplished in their personal life, their professional life, it's all overshadowed by how they look and how they don't feel good about how they look. 
we couldn't understand why would you have such a universal condition. Well, in that same conversation, as casual conversations do, the topic just happened to wander on to fashion dolls. And we started talking about our low opinion of them and of the image they portray to girls about women. And do you know, after that conversation, after those two ideas were connected, I couldn't get it out of my mind. I started thinking, well, isn't this just a toy? Don't girls know better that this isn't the way adult women really look? Because certainly that's what the toy industry has been telling us. But I started to do some research. I was curious, was it possible that they could have any type of negative impact on children? Well, I started to read everything I could get my hands on regarding body image. I went to the U of M Biomedical Library, the St. Paul Children's Hospital at Beckman Library. When you think about it, when do you think girls form their body image? When do you think they form in their mind a picture of what they should look like to be considered lovable and acceptable? Do you know until I did my research, if someone had asked me that, I would have said, it must be around puberty sometime. Their bodies are changing. They must look around for information. They look around objectively, and they all, every one of them, come to the conclusion that given the wide spectrum of how people look, somehow they just don't fit in. They're not acceptable. And then they enter into a lifelong battle with their bodies. Well, I'll tell you, when I did my research, I discovered something that absolutely stunned me. I discovered something that explained to me why women's opinions of their bodies just seem to self-destruct. And I discovered something that was so motivating to me that I found, founded High Self-Esteem Toys and created the Happy to Be Me doll with no option of turning back. If you remember, nothing else I say tonight please remember this, because it's the most important thing I'm going to say. What I discovered is that girls form a picture in their mind of what an adult woman's body must look like to be considered lovable and acceptable by the time they are six years old. They carry that image in their mind throughout a lifetime, and they're acting out on that image. The medical community knows that the alarming increase we're seeing in dieting, eating disorders, and low self-esteem as a result of poor body image is due in part to the fact that that mental image that girls are forming by the time they're six is a very distorted image of women. It has no basis in biological reality. So what I'm saying is, how you feel about your body was not a free will, cho free will choice that you made as an adult. How you feel about your body is what you were conditioned to think by the time you were six. By the time you were six, you had formed a picture in your mind of what it takes to be considered lovable. And all you had to do as you grew up was compare your own body to this very distorted, unrealistic image you carry around in your mind with you. If you do a grassroots survey of your friends and ask them how they feel about their bodies, I think you'll discover the incredible power of that early training and conditioning. After I discovered this, I was absolutely convinced that fashion dolls, as they are today, have a negative impact on our children. Now, as parents and as grandparents, we can't control what the kids see on TV for a large part. We can't control the magazines. We can't control the billboards. But we sure can control the shape of the plastic of the dolls they play with. Right now, what's happening today in those very important formative years, three, four, five, six, children are going through an unintentional but very intensive negative training process. And the fact that it is unintentional doesn't negate the fact that they're still taking in this very negative view of women. <clears throat> Before I continue on the story of the Happy to Be Me doll, 
Let me just take a moment and compare the Happy to Be Me DAO to the current fashion DAO to point out to you the differences. And I have some that I'll pass around, but before I do that, I'd just like to go through the differences with you. This is a typical fashion DAO. And this is the Happy to Be Me DAO. If you look at the fashion DAO, what they would have girls believe during that time when they're three, four, five, six, spending hundreds of hours over a number of years dressing and undressing and studying these dolls in their own way is that the shoulders are much broader than the hips, that the waist goes down to literally half the size of the chest. If you have a 36 inch chest, the waist is 18 inches. If you look at this doll from the side, you'll see that they would have girls believe that your rib cage drastically indents to a very small waist and she actually has an indented stomach. She has very small, deformed feet. And if you look at her face, her eyes are very dilated. Her pupils are very dilated. Is one, one of my favorite comments was a, a gentleman who had bought one for, her, for his daughter. And he said, it's so nice to see a doll without the duh look. If you look at the Happy to Be Me doll, what a girl see for hundreds of hours for a number of years. They see that generally hips are broader than shoulders, that waist barely indent at all, and indeed if later you get a chance to look at the happy to be me dolls that are dressed over there, you can't even find their waist with the clothes on, which if you look at real people, that's the way it is. If you look at her from the side, you'll see her rib cage goes straight down to a normally proportioned waist, and she has a rounded tummy. She has normal sized feet and she has very alert, focused and thinking eyes. If you stand these two side by side, you'll see that one appears much taller than the other. Actually, their torsos are the same size. The reason this doll appears so much taller is her legs are disproportionately long and her neck is disproportionately long for her body. This is a very distorted image of what an adult woman looks like. And I'll pass these around so you can look at them. And I also have sheets here, these you can keep, that go through the comparison that we just went through. And as you look at that fashion doll, bear in mind that 47% of all girls will grow up to be a size 14 or larger. Yet the fashion doll is what most girls are being trained in those formative years regarding what an adult woman's body looks like. After I discovered this, I was excited. I thought this was a breakthrough. Here was a way that we could very quickly, very easily, start beginning to build very healthy body images for young girls. All we had to do was change the shape of plastic of the dolls. What a simple thing to do. I thought that by changing the plastic, the shape of the plastic, we would be removing a major obstacle to high self-esteem. It seemed like the obvious thing to do. So being somewhat naive, it, it, it seemed like the obvious thing to do for someone else, not for me. I wanted to convince somebody else to do this. So being naive, what I did is I went and visited three toy manufacturers. When I went to the first one, I felt absolutely confident when I explained to them what I had found out, and that simply by changing the shape of the plastic, they could do something that was very beneficial for children, that they would immediately see the benefit, that they would see this, is, this means good business. They will understand that certainly mothers and fathers and grandfathers and grandmothers, that they're going to want to try and provide the best for the girls they love. Well, I'll share with you what the results were. The first two toy manufacturers I went to see said, Mattel has a stranglehold on the market, and that is the shape of the dolls girls will see forever. The third toy manufacturer I went to see concurred with the first two but he also threw in that the secretary to the president of his company looked like a Barbie doll, so you see women could look like Barbie dolls. 
And he said he really didn't feel the average American woman would get it, that body image was important for young girls. Needless to say, when I left the office of that third toy manufacturer, I was very discouraged. I mean, they had convinced me, that's right, this is the image girls will see for the next, forever. But you know, after I did the reading, after I found out what's happening with girls and when body images were being formed, I couldn't let go of the idea. When I look back, probably when I visited with that third toy manufacturer and he made the remark that the average American woman wouldn't get it, that was probably the emotional turning point for me where I was convinced something needed to be done and if they weren't going to do it, I was going to do it. Really what we're doing here is we're fighting an institution. Make no mistake about it, fashion dolls are an institutionalized way of looking at women and their place in the world. And it is very much an institutionalized training tool for young girls, for three, four, five, six-year-old girls. The question is, does the average American woman get it? I was so convinced that I put all of my resources from my other company and personal resources into developing this product. The product first went on sale November of last year. The way it first went on sale is Byerly's, which is a grocery chain in the Twin Cities. They're a nine-store grocery chain. One of the managers of the grocery of the, one of the stores that was close to where I lived called up and said, you know, we like the fact you're a local entrepreneur and we like your concept and we'd like to host the worldwide introduction of this style. Now, they're a chain that never, normally never carries toys. They're a grocery store. And I thought, this is perfect. There has been nothing typical or textbook of this whole project. What a perfect place to introduce the doll, a grocery chain. So we worked with Byerly's, and we airshipped in 1,500 dolls. And we held our breath. 1,500 dolls for nine toy stores would have been a phenomenal amount. But $1,500 for nine grocery stores, we were sweating it. Well, I was on two radio talk shows letting people know where and when the dolls would be available. And Byerly's also carried the clothes. And I'll come back to why I make such a point of that later. When they went on sale, within the first two hours, all of the clothes were gone. Within 24 hours, all of the dolls were gone. Pat Cullen from Byerly's called me up the next day. He says, we have hundreds of unsatisfied customers. Our phones are ringing off the hook. We need more. I said, great. And how many do you want? We air shipped in another 1,200. They got in. They were sold out in 24 hours. Byerly sold over 4,000 dolls in nine days, and they were not consecutive days. I haven't yet come up with an analogy to explain how phenomenal it is that nine grocery stores can sell $4,000 in nine days. So my conclusion is the average American woman gets it. Not only does the average American woman get it, get it, the fathers, the grandfathers all get it and understand it. The parents and grandparents. They very much want to see their daughter and granddaughter have every possible opportunity to develop a healthy body image because they know that if you develop a healthy body image when you're young, a great deal of your self-esteem is derived from that. And I'll tell you, mothers and grandmothers also know from personal experience that if you fail to develop a healthy body image when you're young, it is nearly impossible to ever recover that piece of your self-esteem as an adult. It really needs to be taught to children by the time they are six. So what's the reaction from children? Well, I had originally thought, and if you read some of the early press clippings, I told, to the, told it to the folks in the media that I thought it would be a kind of a long subconscious process 
that the kids really wouldn't notice the immediate physical differences. The, the parents certainly did, but the, the children, it would take a long time. I was dead wrong. Children immediately notice the difference. Mothers have told me their daughters, three, four-year-old daughters, will say she looks more like a real people. Children who are five or six or older and can articulate the differences better, they will click through it just like an advertisement for you. If you have an opportunity, if you have access to a happy to be me doll in the fashion doll and a young child, take the clothes off both and ask for their comments. It's fascinating. And it will depend on the child that you ask. Let me give you an example of what some of the kids have said. One, one mother and her daughter I was on a uh, talk show with because her mother had called me and said, I've got to tell you what my daughter said when she got the Happy to Be Me doll as a gift. She undressed the doll, took one look at it, and said, Mom, this doll's fat. Now, as you see these dolls being passed around, look at the waist of the doll. If you honestly believe that you should look like the fashion doll, and you look at the Happy to Be Me doll, by golly, she does look you know, quite differently constructed. And you can see why the child was confused. Other children, one, one mom called to tell me, do you know my daughter used to sit through Jenny Craig commercials and Diet Pepsi and Diet Coke commercials? She wouldn't say a word, just take it all in. She said, you know what she says now when she sits through those commercials? She says, Mom, why is that woman worrying about dieting? She's not overweight. They're not being sucked in anymore. And this is just a matter of a few months. One buyer told me, when I was at the New York Toy Fair, another one of my favorite stories, he said he bought his daughter one of the Happy to Be Me dolls. But he didn't take away the fashion dolls, and he watched what, what, how the children played with the dolls. He said, it's great. He said, every time the dolls come out, the Happy to Be Me doll is a doll that makes all the decisions, makes all the plans, directs all the activity, and the fashion doll just dumbly follows along behind. So it goes to show you the image portrayed by the fashion doll is not lost on girls. Children find the doll more fun. We gave the doll long combable hair, um, and we used um, Italian imported hair so that it, it, it combs very easily. My engineering background, when I was doing this, what I wanted to do was make the hair plastic, an integral part of the body, because I thought, well, gee, then the kids can take it in the water and they don't have to worry about messing up the hair. And fortunately, the other members of the team, the model maker, face painter, wig maker, said, whoa. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a classic case of you can't get the job done until you're elected. If you want the children to spend a lot of time getting the body image, you have to give it the hair for the play value so kids can put it in braids and ribbons and that type of thing. We also gave the doll bendable arms, wire embedded arms, so that she can hold things. Children, um, I, I had called them bend, bendable arms, but a number of children have gave, given me much better marketing names for the arms. They have called them hugging arms and holding arms. So that's the children's reaction to the doll so far. And to me, the most gratifying part of this is when moms call me up and they tell me that their children are wa watching Diet Pepsi commercials and saying, this doesn't <coughs> ring true anymore. I'm going to also pass around now a sign-up sheet if you'd like to receive our catalogs in the future. Because let me explain to you, what, what you're seeing here is the unfolding of a startup company, literally. We started last November, we're fighting an institution, and what we're doing is, we're kind of changing the plan of attack here. Last year what we did is we briefly touched on the mass merchants, Target, Toys R Us, Child World, some of those. Target was the only one that was willing to carry the clothes. Everybody else told us, well, we'll try the doll first, and if that works out real well, then we'll carry the clothes. <laughs> yeah. There's a gentleman who can appreciate what's wrong with this tactic. Um, that's kind of equivalent to saying, here's a really great battery-operated toy, but we won't carry the batteries, and you can't buy them anyplace. It, 
we, ha we have received, I have boxes of letters in my office from parents saying, after months of searching, I finally found your Dow. Great Dow, but where are the clothes? You know, people writing pages to me, don't you understand that the play value in this for children is changing the clothes? And some parents would say, at least give her shoes. I can sew the clothes, but I can't sew the shoes. So the fact that the mass merchants aren't interested in carrying the doll clothes, we looked also at possibly just working through the small toy stores. The problem we have with that distribution channels, while they will carry the doll and they will carry the clothes, we have no means of telling people where and when they can get the dolls. And that's been a big problem up to this point was the incredible sporadic distribution. So what we're doing is we're going to take the company direct mail. We are going to sell the dolls directly to the mothers and fathers and grandparents. Let me explain a couple other reasons why we think this is beneficial. My goal for the High Self Esteem Toys Company is to give every girl access to a doll that's representative of herself. To me, this is crucial. You can't just take your initial Caucasian version doll and change the skin color a little bit or paint the face different a little bit and say, well, and gee, now I've got the Asian American, African American, Hispanic. It doesn't work. Kids are much brighter than that. But when you show the dolls to the retailers, not all, but many of them are pretty cool on anything other than the Caucasian doll. And I've tried to explain to them that, first of all, maybe the reason they haven't sold a lot of the other dolls is people look at those and say, I don't want to give those to my children. They don't represent you know, me. They don't represent my daughter. The other thing I've tried to sell, tried to sell the retailers on is when you look at selling an African American or Asian American or Hispanic doll, you don't just look at just that group of people because other groups of people are going to want to buy that doll for their children too. People realize today that we are a world community. People realize today that they want their three, four, five, six year olds playing with dolls that represent people, you know, all groups of people so that they feel comfortable with them. They know that by doing that, they'll help to make their child a success in the future. Another good example, if you have time later to go over and look, we have the, I have the prototype dolls over there. One of the prototype dolls over there is the grandfather doll. And please bear in mind, the prototype dolls are resin dolls. They will all be just like the original um, Happy to Be Me doll with the bendable <coughs> arms and knees. Is, we have the grandfather doll. And he's an interesting one for you to take a look at. He is the first doll that will be made for children that actually shows somebody with wrinkles on their face. He has the face and physique of a man in his 60s. Now when we showed the retailers this at the New York Toy Fair, their first comment was, why didn't you make a Ken type doll? You know, nobody's going to want to play with this doll. And what I tried to explain to them is that, first of all, the concept of a, a Ken type doll, which we will get to in the future, but that concept, what that represents to the female doll is a husband or a boyfriend type relationship. And now while, while those are great relationships, those are by no means the only great relationships that girls and women have with men. And one of the first very positive relationships that young girls have with a man is with their grandfather. And I'll tell you, I've been invited to go to classes in the Twin Cities and talk to the kids there. And when I show them all the dolls, the girls get big grins over the female dolls. They just love them. But when I take the grandfather doll out, you have never seen such big grins on girls' and boys' faces. The boys want to take him home just as much as the girls do. And if you told them you can only pick one of all these dolls, do you know who they'd pick? Grandpa. That's who they want to take home with them. But seeing as how you can't go through di traditional distribution channels with him, the, the other reason we did him is the, all the dolls girls have today represent people in their 20s, as though that's the only good time in life. That's the only time good things happen to you. 
And that's not the way we want to raise our kids. We want to show them that all stages of life are valuable and important, and this is one way of doing it. Hence, we're going direct mail. And I can tell you the toy industry will watch this very carefully. Nobody before has tried to market 10 to 12 inch dolls direct mail. We've got a lot going for us taking this route. One thing we have going for us is we just moved from being a wholesale company to a retail company. It does wonderful things for the bottom line. We just moved from being a company that sells on terms, net 30, 60, 90, to a cash-based business. That again does wonderful things for your finances. You are seeing this company right now at a major turning point. We are looking right now for the financing to take the company to the next step, which is to go through the first cycle of direct mail. Because the magic number we need is the response rate number. When you send out offers for this doll, what kind of response rate do you get from the moms and dads and grandparents? What we anticipate doing is doing a private placement as bridge financing now for the next six months while we prepare to go public. And we hope to do an IPO in November. This again is virtually unheard of. And obviously it will be viewed as a very speculative stock because we have no track record. We've only been in business since November of last year. But we really have no other alternatives. And I could tell you stories forever about the financing part of this business. The reason the retailers will watch this carefully is when you talk about fashion dolls, you say, well, why would Mattel, Hasbro, Kenner, you know, what is their strong interest in this? Do you know that in the U.S., fashion dolls is an $800 million to $1 billion market, and that is only the U.S.? Japan is as, is as big of a market. There's a lot of money that they're concerned about. So when you look at us going direct mail, if we're successful, what does that mean not just to the toy manufacturers, but to the retailers, the retailers who didn't want to carry the clothes? Mattel's product is a tremendous part of their profitability. And now they've essentially been cut out of the distribution channel. So you could bet people will be watching how this progresses very closely. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> so what I think is, what we don't teach girls is as important as what we do teach them. If all the images girls when they're three, four, five, six years old, if all the images they see are very distorted images of, of women, how can we possibly hope that they'll shrug all that off, and by some miracle, they'll create a healthy image of what a woman's body should look like to be lovable. It's simply not possible. You know, I don't ask anymore. I used to ask, why do, why do so many girls and adult women um, grow up to have a poor body image? I don't ask that anymore. I understand now how there's such incredible universal mass negative thinking for women about how they feel about themselves. I think a more appropriate question to ask would be, how does any girl ever grow up to have a good body image? How did that possibly happen? We have the ability to deliberately send a very powerful, very positive message to girls at the most important formative time of their lives regarding their bodies, and that's when they're three, four, five, six years old. We have the ability, instead of as we are today, giving girls very intensive, it's unintentional, but it's still very intensive and very negative training, we have the ability to replace that with very intensive, purposeful, positive training regarding what an adult woman's body looks like. I'd like to share a few comments from the hundreds of letters we've gotten about from, from mothers that have bought these dolls for their daughters. This one's from Beth in West Virginia. And she says, Dear Kathy, I wanted to thank you for manufacturing the Happy to Be Me doll. My daughter is playing with her at this very minute. 
I went through anorexia nervosa during high school and recovered thankfully during college. It took a great deal of convincing before I finally accepted the fact that women were not supposed to look like Barbie. I now realize that it is beautiful to be healthy, active, and strong enough to teach school and raise my family. I pray my daughter will never suffer from any of the misconceptions that are so common among young women towards their body. The Happy to Be Me doll is a good companion to help her be happy with reality. Congratulations. And then she goes on to say, but where are the clothes? <laughs> This one's from Kathy from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. She says, hi, I love it, your doll that is. I saw an article about it in our paper and I was so happy to see it just in time for Christmas. Although our daughter has some fashion dolls, I'm glad there's an option. We, my daughter and I, sat down and talked about the comparison. She's four and a half. She did indeed, at that young age, believe that she would look like that. I was a bit surprised. And she asked where are the clothes. This is from Michelle. Um, in Rancho Cordova, California. I saw your 48 Hours episode about you and your Happy to Be Me doll. I wanted to write and tell you how much I feel that you are doing a great service. I am 28 years old, a college graduate, and have been working in marketing for Xerox Corporation since I graduated in 1986, except for the last year and a half. In September, I was treated for, for bulimia at a hospital in Redondo Beach, California. I remember as a child playing with Barbie dolls and seeing her on the side of the pool and comparing my body to hers. I believe that many little girls begin to shape their ideals of what they should look like by these beautiful, and see she's still calling them beautifully, shows you how strong conditioning can be, but not real women, but not real women look like. I would like to see children have a chance to realize that they can grow up to look like real women. Little girls can just be themselves, grow up naturally, and that is beautiful. Your Happy to Be Me doll certainly helps to show children this. With all the pressure off, perhaps they will be able to say, I'm happy to be me. Thank you for your sincere efforts. I wish you the best of luck. If there is ever anything I can do for you on the West Coast, please call. We have literally received hundreds of letters like that, and they all ask where are the clothes. But what I hope I've been able to share with you this evening are three things. The most important is that girls are taught. There's no free will choice. Girls are taught by the time they are six what an adult woman's body must look like to be lovable. The second point is, is that the medical community knows today that the alarming increase we're seeing in dieting, eating disorders, and low self-esteem due to a poor body image is due in part to the fact that the mental image girls are forming has no basis in biological reality. They are forming very distorted images which they will carry with them through their lifetime and try and act out on. The third point is, I believe we can intentionally, purposefully make a change in this pattern. I think by providing children with realistic body images when they're three, four, five, six, and verbalizing to them, an important person, a, a mother, a father, a grandmother, a grandfather, verbalizing to the young girl that normal proportions, that's what's considered lovable. Do you have any questions for me? Uh huh. Um, well, I think I found an individual to help us design that. We would be using that type of material. It's um, a very nerve-wracking event because we'll be raising enough money to do one cycle. If the cycle hits, we'll be in good position to go public and make this happen. If the cycle doesn't hit, if for some reason when that piece is designed, it's not designed in a way that touches home with people when they read it, um, it's back to the drawing board. Mm -hmm. What I would like to do with the Happy to Be Me dolls is once we get through doing the Caucasian, African American, Asian American, Hispanic, and Native American dolls. I'd like to go back and do the dolls with different body shapes. 
You can use the same clothes on a huge variety of body shapes. You would be amazed what adding just a thin, thin layer of resin to those dolls, the complete difference it, it look it gives their body. I am absolutely convinced that if we start with children when they're three, four, five, six, and show them a variety of body shapes and tell them that all of these are acceptable, all of these are considered lovable, that they will believe it and that nobody but nobody will be able to convince them differently when they're older. So various body shapes are most certainly something I would like to do. Any other questions? Do you know who some of the biggest supporters are? Are the Christian groups. By far and away, um, that's what some of the, the reps had said is, oh, what happens when you know, people who are very Christian oriented uh, see this? And they had me nervous. <laughs> it's like, why, why, why would this be an issue? They are by far and away some of the strongest supporters because they're very family oriented. They very, are very much concerned with the well-being of their daughter. And they very much, not just the body shape, but the entire image presented by the fashion doll industry, they view that very negative, very anti-family, um, very demeaning to women. And um, I can't tell you the number of different religious talk shows and that that, you know, they, they suggested, well, go on this, go on that, do this. These, these are the people to connect in this religious community that would really support this. And if I had time, I would be doing that. Uh -huh. You've the genitals on the board. That's a, that's a great question. The, the question was, how anatomically correct will we make the male doll? And what we're planning on doing, since it's a direct male catalog, is offering two versions. But I'll tell you, from talking to parents, by far and away, I think our biggest seller is going to be the anatomically correct version. And it's not going to just go to parents who want to give it to their daughter. A great number of moms want to give it to their sons. They want their son to have a realistic image of what an adult male's body looks like so that they don't get caught up in the big strong syndrome and the, and the steroid syndrome. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see. Uh -huh. I love all those comments um, because the, the, the comment about women believing their stomach should be flat and you look at the fashion dolls, they're indented. As I've gone around speaking and people have undressed it down looking at it, I've had a lot of adult women do this. They'll say, her stomach's rounded. And I'll say, well, yes, that's the way adult women look. I thought they were supposed to be flat. I've spent all this time trying to get my stomach flat and it's not supposed to be that way. It's a, it's the most incredible misconception on what we're supposed to look like. As far as using the doll um, with eating therapists, some eating therapists in the Twin Cities are already using the doll. She invited me to sit in on a group session once and it was fascinating because she held up the fashion doll and the happy to be me doll. And she said, which is the most desirable body shape? And do you know everybody picked the fashion doll? I mean, like, this was something that, you know, yeah, we should look this way. And just, but if you were going to buy this for your, if parents were going to buy this for a daughter, which one do you think would be the most helpful? Everyone picked the happy to be me doll. She asked them, if you were going to buy one for your own daughter, which would you pick? There was a lot of confusion there. Because they're concerned that, gee, if this really is what I've been taught to be lovable and acceptable, I better start my daughter out on the battle against her body path right away, even though she won't fit in. I've got to try and make her, as opposed to allowing her to grow up feeling good about how she looks. But, you know, this is a, um, 
a very select group of people. Because the eating therapist, this, this was before we did the Byerly's introduction, and the eating therapist expressed the concern, and again, she made me nervous, was you're selling to a market of women who grew up on fashion dollars. How accepting can you be? They may look at this happy to be me, don't say, gee, she's fat. But from Byerly's, what I'd say is, adult women are ready for a change. Uh -huh. 